Hello everyone, I'm Matt Video Productions and welcome back to another video. Everyone, today we have some extremely exciting news that I'm honestly shocked came so early. In today's video, we're going to be exploring something that I believe basically proves that we're getting Dolly 2 public access very soon. And since I think this is coming so soon, the second half of this video is going to be what to do when you actually get Dolly 2 access, because it's a little bit more complicated than you might actually expect at first. So I think a lot of you guys will find this video particularly useful. Anyways, I like to open up these videos with a interesting generation. This one was from Reddit, and I mean, come on. This is one of those Dolly mini prompts brought to life in Dolly 2. This is a gaming chair as a toilet. Now, Dolly 2 seems to be particularly good at prompts like this where it has to recreate a new kind of product because obviously a gaming toilet chair doesn't really exist in the real world although I mean it sounds like it could be a pretty good product but you can see we got the emergency handles on the side of the gaming toilet it's obviously an actual toilet and it's got all the right gaming chair features that you would expect so many people are now receiving access that we're getting some of those more you know crazier dolly mini-esque generations such as this silly stuff rather than just, you know, art. Although one could consider this fine art. To give you another example of this, the prompt for this was my Indian dad accidentally taking a selfie with the front camera squinting because the camera flash is so bright in his face. And you can see all these came out pretty well. But this is another one of those uh, silly prompts that honestly ends up good. So yeah, it's just Dolly 2 is now getting so broad, you're, you're getting all kinds of crazy uh, generations that are, that are more fun and silly. Anyways, moving into today's topic, OpenAI is now sending out surveys to some users, not every user, about pricing. I actually heard about this this morning when I woke up on Twitter. A viewer actually sent me the entire list to look through. I didn't actually receive one myself. I do have Dolly 2 access, but they never sent me a survey, probably because they know I'll just pay for it, whatever the price. But as you can see, there's a few um, interesting questions here, and there's a whole discussion on Reddit that I will link down in the description below below. But this is extremely exciting because honestly, why would they be sending pricing emails out to a bunch of users unless they plan on charging people soon for this? And the CEO of OpenAI stated that Dolly was releasing publicly soon, which I actually talked about when I went over the OpenAI Reddit AMA. And you can also check that video out down in the description below. OpenAI has also been tweaking the uh, AI algorithm. Now they allow for photorealistic face generations and they've really been constricting their rules lately in what you can type in to generate, which means they think that it's starting to get safer for public access. Again, another topic I covered mainly on the Reddit AMA. In general, OpenAI has been super active lately. They've been inviting a ton of users. I get new comments every day on my YouTube channel saying, hey, I got access. I still get more comments uh, from people saying they don't have access and they applied on like April 8th or something like that. So I don't know what OpenAI is doing about that. But all signs point to Dolly 2 access public soon, especially with the competition from Google and Midjourney. So now I'm going to go through the entire survey list that was sent in by a fan. All right, everyone. So here is the Dolly pricing survey. So this is a Google survey. As you can see, this is where your email would be. And it says switch account. This is Google. And then separately you put in your email, which is obviously your Dolly 2 email. I wish they specified that. Then they ask for your profession, which is interesting interesting, which means they, they obviously care about whatever profession you have, and maybe their opinion will change based on, you know, your status, I guess, as a uh, professional. I mean, makes sense. What do you use Dolly for? Personal use, work use, or other use? This is interesting. I guarantee, though, almost every single person putting in the survey is going to say personal use, but I like that they allow an other category for you to write in your own interesting stuff so they can sort of get at what people are using it for. And here's where it gets really interesting price per prompt for the next set of questions a prompt refers to generations each leading to six images and within painting you only get five and for example currently any dolly 2 user gets 50 prompts in 23.5 hours on a rolling basis which means once you use a prompt the time of that prompt is recorded and in 23.5 hours that prompt will renew and you can use it again. And they changed this from 24 hours as if uh, 50 prompts in 23.5 hours is much better than 50 prompts in 24 hours. At any rate, the next question is at what price per prompt would you consider it too expensive to buy in 
the US dollar. Personally, I would consider anything over 20 cents per prompt too expensive, maybe even a little bit lower than that. 25 cents per prompt would be four prompts equaling a dollar, and I could see that adding up very quickly. Their next question is even more interesting. At what price per prompt do you think is reasonable but is still a bit of a stretch? So you'd have to give some thought into buying. This is interesting because this seems like this is what we want to charge. It's still reasonable, but it's a stretch. What's the maximum amount of money we can get per prompt, basically? Again, that's just my opinion. Okay, I could be wrong. I don't know the reason they're doing the survey. Okay, for me, this would probably be something like 15 cents per prompt. Uh, maybe 18, 20 cents per prompt. At what price would I consider it a bargain? Pretty much anything under three or four cents per prompt is a bargain in my book. I don't think they're going to give you the bargain prompt. I think they're going to charge something like 15 cents per prompt, 10 cents per prompt, somewhere in that range is my guess what they're going to charge. And towards the end here, they say, optional, please tell us more about how you've been using Dolly. I think that's a really interesting question to ask, and I'm glad they're asking questions like that. Personally, I've been using them to make all sorts of interesting content for YouTube, looking at cool generations. I've been using InPaint sort of like a Photoshop sometimes, and it's been pretty good for that. And honestly, for these questions, I would love to hear you guys watching right now. I'd love to hear your answers down in the comments below. And I try to respond and read every single comment I get. And they say, anything else for us to consider as we price Dolly? Don't make it too expensive, guys. <laughs> please. The GPT-3 pricing was really set up quite well, so I trust OpenAI in this regard, and I don't know how much it costs them to run Dolly, but something reasonable, please, because believe me, the other companies are going to sweep under your feet and take all the customers. Companies like Midjourney. All in all, this is a decent survey from OpenAI. I just really like to see that they're actually putting this out. This means they want to price it soon, and they want to get it to the public for just public paid access soon. Very good news for everyone. And as you can see, people on Reddit are already upset. Price per prompt. They don't want prices per prompt, but you know, that makes the most sense. I still think price per prompt is the way to go. Um, this person referenced Emerson, which is a GPT-3 based chatbot, but it's not actually made by OpenAI. I will say OpenAI has very good pricing. Pay for what you use pricing. Some people are saying that you should only pay for what you download. And this guy says that it motivates them to make generations that are worst. So you spend more prompts to to get the results you want. Basically saying that if you can't get your result correctly the first time, you're going to have to spend more money for more prompts to get the correct result. I understand where this guy is coming from, but the competition is going to make it so OpenAI can't really do this, especially with Midjourney already having an unlimited access model. If OpenAI somehow made Dolly worse just so they could make an extra buck, it just wouldn't make any sense considering the other options that are out there and considering that OpenAI is a very research sort of scientific based company where they want to improve their technology. This is an interesting comment. If they stick to per prompt, their platform would quickly be replaced by a competitor. I'm not sure about that. Not yet. But if Midjourney does do that huge upgrade to a huge model, this could be uh, this could be very competitive. Although Midjourney's unlimited model is $30 a month. And it, with the cheap enough per prompt, Dolly 2 st could still compete. This guy makes a good comment here. GPT-3 is already per token or word part input and output but they're going for the same pricing strategy. A lot of people would pay for a subscription, but don't want to be charged per prompt. Again, people are upset that Dolly 2 doesn't always make the perfect generation and you don't want to pay for that. A lot of, again, a lot of people prefer the subscription. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. I think it really just depends on what OpenAI prices it as. Like, let's say that it was a cent per prompt. That means a dollar would be a hundred prompts. We don't know what it's going to, what they're going to charge us. It's probably going to be over a cent per prompt, but that would be like miracle scenario. So it depends on how cheap it is per prompt, realistically. All right, folks, switching things up a little bit. Since to me, at least, it is obvious that Dolly 2 is coming public very soon, what should you guys do when you get access? It seems like it's a very simple app. And it really is at its core, but sometimes you have to watch out. Now, the first thing that we need to do here is look through the content policy because there's a lot of stuff that you think would be allowed, but just isn't because of how strict the rules are with OpenAI. Here is the content policy, everyone. Do not attempt to create, upload, or share images that are not G-rated, not even PG-13, G-rated, or that could cause harm in any way. So you can read through all of these 
I mean, this is all pretty basic stuff. This is stuff most people wouldn't be trying to generate anyways. Important, you have to disclose the role of the AI. You have to indicate uh, which portions of an image are AI generated. And you are allowed to post them to social media, obviously. Respect the rights of others. Don't upload images without their consent. But it doesn't even let you upload images of people at all. So I don't know why this isn't a little bit more specific. Don't upload images when you don't hold the rights. No celebrities. Oh, they do talk about prohibiting uploads of realistic faces and non-commercial purposes only so no nfts guys and they actually do provide their support here i don't know how good their support is but yeah you don't want to get banned it's actually very easy to get banned from dolly if it's an accident usually you get reinstated though as we discussed earlier dolly 2 has a prompt limit currently although with the pricing limit apparently this is going to change soon as of right now it's 50 prompts on a rolling basis every 23 and a half hours and the interface is super simple here we've got text box you can type whatever you want in here and they get as crazy as everyone hopes but keep in mind when you're designing your prompts there are many banned words words you wouldn't think are banned the word shot you know shot like a camera that's banned. And there's no list. I actually asked on Reddit and a bunch of people saw my post, but no one actually has compiled a list of banned words. OpenAI won't give us a list of banned words, so you just kind of have to hope that a word isn't banned. Headshots also banned. Attack is banned. War is banned. So be careful with all of those. We've also got the surprise me button, which generates a random uh, thing. I haven't used it though because I don't want to waste my prompts. Let's generate this one. When you click the generate button, it just sort of shows you this like these random tips and stuff and then a, a little progress bar. And it takes about 10 to 15 seconds to get a set of six images. And as you can see, this is another example of kind of a failed prompt maybe the prompt wasn't specific enough we sort of got like a fish combined with a mail truck like we can see aspects of everything but it didn't really work out and when we look at our images we've got these three dots we can edit the image which is in painting generate variations download or report it if we click on it, we've got all of those same options, but um, down here on the side and stuff. If we look over here on the right side, we can see a bunch of previous generations. It doesn't save all of them, but we can see previous ones. And we can click on them and bring them up. For example, this is one I did last night. Nostalgic 70s era close-up photo of a kitten and his tortoise friend enjoying the warm California sun photo taken on a Pentax camera. So this one turned out better than that mail truck one. But let's say I find one that I particularly like. Maybe it's this one. And I want something similar. This one's not cutting it though. That's when I can click variations and it will generate variations based on that image. And as you can see, the results are of similar vein to the one that we had. And you know, they're not too bad. And now we're gonna explore the in-painting feature. This is the edit feature. So when we select an image like this, and maybe we like the image, but we wanna change a piece of it, we can click this edit button, and now I can paint over some part of it, and the AI will replace only this part. And now I could say it's a cat and a turtle celebrating the turtle's birthday. And we'll see if it uh, generates the party hat. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and the turtle is wearing a party hat. Hopefully it gets this right. Hey, it actually did it. So yeah, this is the uh, editing feature, in-painting feature. This one's easily the best. And some of it, it started to get a little cartoony here, not really giving us realism. It tried to generate a turtle wearing a party hat on the turtle. The reason for this is because I didn't describe the whole image uh, detailed enough. If I modified the original prompt, it would have came out better. And there's a cat on the turtle's head wearing a party hat. I have to save that. That's hilarious. But yeah, that's how the editing feature works. Up here, if we go to my collection, we can see everything that we clicked the save button on, which is different than the download button. We have a few different things. We can edit, generate variations, remove from collection or report it with the three dots, or we could download the image here which saves it on your computer or phone and then we can share it and uh, basically this allows us to make the image public and we can share a link of it that leads to the OpenAI website like you might have seen on the Dolly 2 Reddit. There is one last feature to talk about and that is going to be the upload an image to edit feature. Basically with this you can select any image from your phone or computer and upload it and then you can crop it out to whichever way you want. So then we can either generate variations or edit the image to add something in which is what I showed you guys before again with the painting add out. So I'm just going to click generate variations of this image that we have uploaded and again that's when you're not allowed to upload any photorealistic faces or anything like that or any people at all. And there we go. 
It did its best to get some interesting variations. I think they actually came out pretty good. So yeah, everyone, that's sort of the basics on how to use Dolly properly, hopefully without getting banned, right? And uh, yeah, I hope you guys found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out some of my other videos. I have a lot of really interesting stuff. Like yesterday, we actually generated prompts with GPT-3 text AI and then generated them in Dolly 2, and that was a super interesting video. I've got other uh, Dolly 2 news videos here and some other really interesting experiments, some mid-journey stuff going on too, some other uh, alternatives to Dolly 2 while you're still waiting, but shouldn't be for much longer. So yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.